There are more than a thousand pieces of art. Their son Matthew walked me through what is truly the collection of a lifetime. And he was very honest about why it was now being sold and broken up. A lot of it is being sold to pay estate taxes of my mother. It was owned by my father, so upon my father's death, it went to my mother's estate, and my mother passed away, and now there is um, various estate taxes to pay. And so that's a reason why um, we're selling this. Every collection starts with the first piece. In 1970, when they moved to New York City, they just happened to purchase an apartment on Fifth Avenue across from Sotheby's Park Burnett. This was their first purchase. They paid $2,400 for it, including the 10% buyer's premium. 1970? In so 1970. Not bad investment. Two, the estimate is $300,000. And I guarantee you, my mother was behind the purchase, and when my father found out how much she paid for it, he would have said, how much did you pay for that piece? Are you crazy? But now you see my mother as often was right. As we walk round all the porcelain for sale, the phrase bull in a china shop came to mind. Imagine living amongst all of this. A lot of this Chinese export porcelain was in my family's dining room, in cabinets, but also on tables. And for some reason, it survived. And there really wasn't a fear growing up of breaking anything. And uh, somehow, we made it. In our own smaller, perhaps, ways, we all aspire to be a collector. And Matthew has sound advice. This is a window for the Cooley Playhouse done by Frank Lloyd Wright in 1912. It's important to collect something that is globally appreciated versus locally appreciated. And whatever you do, buy the very best. The breakup of this collection may be the end of one dynasty, but Matthew's sure it's the start of another. I'm always fascinated by auctions. Well, while the Wolf family prepares to say goodbye to these well-loved collection, I spoke to the chief executive of Sotheby's about the significance of the auction and, of course, in the post-pandemic world, the state of the auction market. Yeah, I mean, there's a thousand objects on display. Um, the breadth and depth and connoisseurship of the Wolfs and their collecting activities is on full display here. This really is the best of the best across the categories, and it does reflect um, not just the history of these categories and objects, but the history of the country as well in a very interesting way. If you take a look at the way the market is at the moment, how would you describe it? Uh, muted, frothy, excited, how, what would you say? I would describe it as uh, very solid, certainly resilient in light of all of the uncertainty around the world. Uh, and we've seen this, and there's actually particularly strong interest in blue chip art and objects, the best of the best. I think while people may be concerned about, you know, the future and the state of the world, at the same time, they know that these types of objects are not going to be available possibly ever again. And for those who love and follow these, um, these objects, this is a moment when they have to step in. The coming out of the pandemic, and into a quasi-recession, because we're not quite sure what it is, but it's going to be sluggish, and there's no certainty of the market at the moment. Does that make it difficult? To be honest, uh, I think our, our part of the reason our markets have been so resilient is, first of all, they're very global. So at the same time as you may be seeing concerns about inflation or interest rates in the US, you're seeing heightened concern about geopolitics and conflict in Europe, but Asia is coming back out. The Middle East is very strong. There's all kinds of, uh, you know, countervailing forces that are supporting the market. What's your role and the responsibility? Obviously, you don't want, you have to obey the law, given. But if somebody is bidding for uh, an expensive item in the millions of dollars on any auction, do, is there a responsibility upon Sotheby's to make sure it is not from sanctioned money? There are clear rules and regulations around how this works. So we pre-register our clients, we 
follow all the applicable know your client and anti-money laundering protocols around the world. And that is true of, you know, of all clients and all, all lots. And we do very closely follow the, uh, the applicable rules. Um, that said, at the time the Russia-Ukraine conflict broke out in that specific case, Russian uh, buyers were less than 1% of the bidders at Sotheby's at the time. So frankly, it's not been a, a sort of dramatic sea change for us. But you must be delighted the Chinese are coming back. Absolutely. Seeing the resurgence of Asia, the reopening of Asia, we saw our largest Chinese works of art sale in nine years, uh, two weeks ago in Hong Kong. And we've seen greatly increased interest in um, Asian bidders uh, throughout the auctions globally. I, mean, I love coming to these sale rooms, but I always wonder, and I don't have an answer to this, how can you structure an auction so that the little guy has a chance at something? It might surprise you, of course, at Sotheby's, all of the highest value lots get the attention, but the large majority of things we sell are well under uh, $25,000, which certainly is still an affluent market, but it's not the tens of millions that we're often known for. But there's no way that you can sort of say, we're going to let this one go cheap. You know, we run a fair, transparent marketplace. I think that auctions are incredibly powerful and important in terms of price discovery. That's why they've been so enduring. Um, oftentimes, we see the second bidder having an underbidder's remorse. Um, and oftentimes, the winner of the auction actually has, takes comfort in the fact there was a bid right behind uh, her or him, so they know they've paid the fair price. The auction, the whole process is fascinating to watch. It brings out the very best and very worst in people, that moment of bidding. There's definitely a dopamine effect uh, in, the, in the auction room. We see this in all auctions anywhere, absolutely. The excitement, the, the desire, um, that's part of the magic of auctions, I suppose.